cold enough for you? Well, first of all, you gotta be a realist. It's gonna come. <laughs> There's not much you can do, I, I guess, besides really getting mentally prepared for it. Here's a real news flash. It is, of course, cold in Minnesota during the winter. How cold is it? Well, as I told you before, I moved back here from California. You know, you try to tell your friends back in California what 90 below zero wind chill is like, and they can't grasp it at all, because they can't grasp much. Most of them are on drugs. But I told them this. I was out shoveling my driveway, 90 below zero wind chill, and I wanted to come in and get warm. I came in. I got in my freezer, 90 degrees warmer in the freezer. That's a fact. I just had a little popsicle and went back out again, all sweaty for heaven's sake. So, yeah, it's cold. But the most salient feature of a Minnesota winter is not its harshness, but its length. We could take unbearable cold for, say, six weeks, secure in the knowledge that there is an end in sight. But from that first freezing rain in November that lays a nice base for the entire winter and makes my uphill driveway into a world-class Olympic luge run to that last taunting inch of snow in early May, well over half of another year has passed. And it isn't just the cold, just the length, it's the bleakness of the landscape. Frozen water, unsightly piles of yellow and black snow, bare trees. Think about it, my friends. You could get pregnant in a particularly cool September when all but a few brown leaves were down and deliver in May when only a few leaves were budding and see nothing but naked trees for your entire pregnancy. That's probably how Leif Erikson got his name. His Viking mother was completely desperate. We Minnesotans manage the weather by avoiding it. In the cities, we walk in the skyways. At home, we use the attached garage. You know, James J. Hill invented the attached garage. That's how he sold so much lumber. Later, his relatives convinced the Department of Transportation to panel the freeway, but hey, that's another story. Another way Minnesotans pass the winter is with the dynamic sport of ice fishing. The guy who invented this sport must have had severe marital problems. He awoke at 4.30 one morning, looked at his sleeping wife and said, I would rather be sitting in the middle of Mille Lacs in a freezing plywood shack waiting for a suicidal walleye than lying here next to you. Shortly after that, beer was invented. In a related story, Minnesotans generally gain weight during the winter. And all the helpful national diet companies offer great suggestions like, why not substitute a healthy food for a similar unhealthy one? For example, instead of pie for dessert, try one rice cake. Whoa, hold me back. And instead of butter and sour cream on your baked potato, have some plain yogurt. Oh, that's roughly equivalent, isn't it? Kind of like a travel brochure saying, for your next winter vacation instead of Maui, try Minnesota. They both start with M. And they both have salt water and sand. Of course, in Minnesota, they're on the freeway. Winter can be beautiful and serene for a time, but even a good-looking guy, Cato Kalin comes to mind, can wear out his welcome. But Minnesotans are a tolerant and very hardy people. That's one reason I like being a performer in Minnesota. You know, you make plans to go out to a show with a Minnesotan, and by golly, you're going. There can be a blizzard you cannot see your hand in front of your face, and a Minnesotan will say, I think it's letting up. And so, as we kick off our long, bleak, hard segment on winter, let us salute the hardy Minnesotans, the only people on this planet who randomly spritz Pam and Rightguard around, hoping to speed and promote global warming. Minnesotans' way of saying that they like you is, can I, can I charge your car? Can I jump your, jump your car? A pickup line. Hey, baby, can I jump your car? Okay, so it's winter, and the door to the bar swings open with a flurry of snow, and a naked guy runs in with jumper cables wrapped around his neck, and the bartender says, okay, but don't start anything.
It was so cold in Minnesota yesterday. How cold was it? Well, the farmer milked for 10 minutes before he found out he was shaking hands with himself. <laughs> it's been real cold in Minnesota the last month or so. Yeah, how cold has it been, bud? It's been so cold that when I had my appendix taken out, it was chapped. <laughs> But it was so cold yesterday that I saw two lawyers standing on the corner and they had their hands in their own pockets. Hey, we moan about our Arctic winter, but let's admit it, it makes us feel strong. It's our badge of courage, our claim to moral superiority. Remember, winter is six months long and it's never too soon to start preparing for it. Wendy Weatherall, our intrepid consumer reporter, began this summer. Hello, this is Wendy Weatherall coming at you from the parking lot at the Big Bell Ice Cream Company in Minneapolis. It's a very, very hot July, but my producer wants me to talk about winter. Let's face it, winter is not what it used to be. Sure, it gets a little nippy now and again, but with Thinsulate, Polar Fleece, and Goose Down, haven't we really conquered the cold? I believe we have. To demonstrate this fact, the crew will seal me in this subarctic freezer. Whew. Here, I will spend the next 24 hours dressed in nothing but long underwear, insulated socks, Ski pants, a turtleneck, a down vest, a down coat, Sorel boots, mittens, and maybe a hat. Some wise person said at some time that the key to keeping warm besides wearing layers was to maintain a positive attitude. Think warm, think warm, think warm. Sun, beach, palm trees, sand, music. I love you, Colin, she said tentatively. Come here, he grabbed her roughly grabbing her with his calloused hands. This is not my sport. It's hour number four. I'm still here in the freezer. Uh, it's cold, but it's dry cold. I don't speak Italian. Non parlo italiano. I speak very little. Parlo poco. Hi, it's Wendy, in case anyone cared. My hands are fine, my feet are fine, my attitude's pretty good. Uh, just wonder, guys. I can no longer feel any parts of my body. No puedo dar torre de mi cuerpo. If you could call the police and have everyone on this crew arrested, I'd appreciate it. Is anyone monitoring my progress at all? I, I need a note or a signal or something. I'm getting kind of lonely and goofy. <laughs> my brain is starting to numb. You guys? Help. <laughs> and to my little brother, Frankie. I leave my entire collection of stamps from Belgium. Take them, Frank. Take them. This is Wendy Weatherall signing off one last time. I didn't want it to end this way, but uh, there's that light I've always heard about. It's so warm and inviting. I. Who, me? Okay. 
Where are we going? Oh, that sounds like a nice place. Is it like Minnesota? Land of 10,000 lakes. It gets really, really cold here. Last winter, though, was the first winter in a long time where you could take a cup of boiling water out front, throw it up in the air, and nothing would hit the ground. My brother and I used to play this game called Avalanche. And to play Avalanche, we would wait for a big snowfall and then hide against the side of the garage. And when the snowplow would come down the road, I would run out just ahead of it and dive into the snowbank. Then the plow would come by and bury me up. Then my brother was the St. Bernard. And he'd come and dig me out. One time, we're playing Avalanche. I'm underneath the snow, the plow goes by, I'm buried up, and I'm under there, and it seems like my brother is taking a long time to come and get me. This is taking a really long time, and it reminded me of the time when he'd locked me in the trunk, and then he got scared and left the room, and my mother had to come in with a screwdriver and pound it through the top of the trunk so I could breathe like a moth in a jar. I remember the screwdriver coming, ju 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 through the top of the trunk, and he'd done that because I'd rolled him up in a carpeting. This was his idea. I'd laid him in a carpet and rolled him up with his head sticking out the end. This is when we found out that he was claustrophobic and he starts screaming, let me out, let me out, I'm gonna kill you, let me out. Ah, ah, ah. He was insane, like a, 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 a mad Pez dispenser. Let me out, I'm gonna kill you. And I, I was in a dilemma, do I let him out? He's gonna kill me, so I ran away. And I wondered if this was fresh in his mind as I lay underneath this snowfall waiting for him. And then there's his little hands and I hear, woo, 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 and he dug me out. I love my brother. That game was his idea, though, if I remember right. Good afternoon. My name is Richard Stiefer. And I have been performing Santa Clauses almost as long as I've been alive. I believe that Santa Claus is a serious occupation, a profession, a calling, if you will, and I would say of, of all the costumed characters I've portrayed, Santa Claus occupies the pinnacle in, in the truest sense of the word. And next to Santa Claus, the gorilla. Everyone loves the gorilla. Christmas is my favorite season of the year. Of course, it's, it's hard to find a way to be Santa Claus 365 days a year. In the off-season, I like to remove myself from the, the maddening pace, and spend a quiet moment by the lake, and enjoy a moment of quiet reflection. When I'm not playing Santa Claus, there's a little something missing from my life. I, I suppose it's, it's like Superman hanging up his, his cape, uh, or, or Batman, you know, putting the Batmobile up on blocks. Hi, Santa. Good afternoon! Santa has something to teach all of us. I appreciated sharing the walk with you, ladies. By all means. Not just about Christmas, but about humanity. We wouldn't have missed it. The pleasure was mine. Every moment that we face conflict or crisis should remember that, that the key is to spread joy. And Merry Christmas! It's so 
cold in Minnesota. How cold is it? It's so cold that people don't look twice when a man walks into a bank wearing a ski mask. Weather proverb. When bones or joints or bunions pain, expect a dose of snow or rain. As snow or rain approaches, the pressure starts to fall. As it falls on the outside, it falls inside your body too. Ouch! Your body tries to adjust. Your joints and your bunions are particularly sensitive to even small changes in pressure. Ouch! 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 I have three cats, and, and whenever winter first comes and they see that first snowfall and they, they go like this, and they're walking and they're shaking off, the, and they turn around and they're so mad. They look at me and they're so mad. And then what they always do is they try a different door. They're hoping that the door to summer is out that other door, which we're all oh, that's cute. looking for the door to summer. Yeah. Jay Beer. Three. Got to be two, at the airport by 4.30. Florida, here on. I come. Hello, Minnesota. This is uh, Dr. Paul, your weather therapist, on a very chilly January evening. Tell me what's on your mind. Who am I? Oh, hello, yes. Doctor. Yes. Oh, hi. Well, say, we've got a big problem with the roof. Now, the ice is building up on the ends there towards the gutter and leaking right through the ceiling onto the Damn. first floor. Huh? Excuse me? What? Damn. Ice what? dam. Oh. Don't you see what's happening, ma'am, on your roof? Well, freeze, no. thaw, freeze, thaw. Well, it's yeah, sort that of is... the bipolar disorder of roof problems. A uh, polar what? No? It's just a little weather therapy joke, ma'am. Oh, well, never mind. I'll ask Ken Barlow. Ouch. That hurt. Dr. Paul, standing corrected. How can I possibly help you? It's me again. Mrs. Brady, so nice to hear from you again. How the heck are you? Well, I am absolutely at my wit's end. My kids are driving me batty. It's El Nino, isn't it? El Nino? I kind of doubt it. L let me ask you something. Where are you calling from, and are you, are you still in therapy? No, I'm in Eden Prairie. Okay, that explains it. Uh, El Nino is a rather rare oceanic warming trend that originates off the coast of Ecuador. Mm. I would venture to say that you're fairly safe in Eden Prairie. Liar. Now, just a minute, young man. I happen to know that El Nino means the child, and you're trying to tell me it has no effect on Not children? Not a bit. However, it has been documented that El Nino can turn parents into bona fide freakish 14-carat no. nutcases. No, really? Come oh to think God. of it, Mrs. Brady, no. you might want to take no. cover. Really? Now, oh, run! No. No. Run, run, Mrs. Brady! Run for your life! Ah! Too late. Dr. Paul's den of dysfunction. How can I serve your weather needs? Hello, doctor. Yes. Thanks for taking my call. What's wrong? I'm having a problem. I don't know what's gotten into me. I'm falling apart. It's so dark, and I feel so sad. Oh, you know, I think this is uh, that sad effect. It's seasonal affective disorder. It's sad for sure, because that's how it makes you feel. You're going to be okay, buddy. you got to hang in there. Just a few more months. Worst case, a few years. I I don't know if I'll make it that long. I'm just so oh, totally... Oh, man. No, 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 no. Don't do that, please. Jeez, I hate the crying. Listen, let me ask you a question. What is your name, sir? Rodney. Rodney? Okay, listen. We are not quitters, are we, Rodney? No. No, we're Minnesotans, Rodney. We can laugh in the face of pain, we can't can. we? We can? Of course we can. Okay. We're different from all those wimps and wussies that live in the South, all those mama boy Malibu beach bums, all those pansies from the panhandle. Come on, they wouldn't last a week here in Minnesota. Does this weather really deep down bother us? I think so. No, come on, Rodney. We're Minnesotans. We can take it. Stand really? up. Come on, stand up. Come on, bring on the Arctic winds, the blizzards, the bugs, okay. the wind chill, the Scorching heat, the floods. Okay. Am I leaving anything out? Okay. Are we going to run screaming? No. Heck no. Heck, come on. Stand up, Rodney. Say okay. this with me. Heck okay. no. We won't go. Heck no. We, we won't, won't go. go. Heck no. Heck no. We won't, we won't go. go. Atta boy, Heck Rodney. No, we won't go. Great. I feel so much better. Great Thank progress. You, doctor. 
poor pathetic little man. Okay, listen, that's it for today, folks. I got to run. Uh, remember, we are Minnesotans. Say it loud, say it proud. Heck no, we won't go. But I'm going. A chill that froze my desire This deep freeze it won't let go Used to hold a flame for you But it drowned in all this snow Is it cold enough for you? Is it cold enough for you yet? Your cold feet, they wreck my libido And you steal all the covers too Your sweet nothings add up to zero The wind chills hotter than you is it cold enough for ya? Is it cold enough for ya yet? Mm, is it cold enough for ya? Cold enough for ya yet? Is it cold enough for you? Oh, yeah, yeah. How long till spring finally gets here? Seems like a throwaway dream. How long till I look at you, dear? Without wanting to run and scream. Is it cold enough for ya? Is it cold enough for ya yet? So the forecast down there in Phoenix. So I got me some maps and a charge up. I pinch up my nose spray and clean it. Winter is not only our longest season, by far, but the easiest to parody. But making fun of a Minnesota winter is too easy. Sort of like shooting fish in a barrel or making fun of Dan Quayle, Donald Trump, or California juries. Hey, anyone can criticize. I thought instead that I would do a top ten list of the good things about a Minnesota winter. Number ten, it builds character. In fact, the only people with more character live in northern Canada, parts of Poland, and the Ukraine. Number nine, we have a pleasantly low rate of indecent exposure. Number eight, short sleeve shirts last forever. Number seven, down coats are the great equalizer. In a down coat and a ski mask, hey, I could be Cindy Crawford. Number six, you can clean up after your dog with a nine iron. Number five, after the first snowfall in November, my yard looks exactly like the yards of my neighbors who actually troubled themselves to rake. Number four, great savings on auto theft deterrent devices. You can lock your car with a bucket of water. Number three, our beloved snowbirds act as goodwill ambassadors to Florida, Arizona, and Texas, promoting Minnesota as a land of excellent drivers and snappy dressers. Number two, number two, let's face it, there, there aren't 10 good things about a Minnesota winner. But number one, it only lasts for six months, and it feels so good when it's over. Freeze, thaw, freeze, thaw. It's sort of the bipolar disorder of roof disorders. I'm a disorder. I'm a walking disorder. But it was so cold yesterday, I saw two lawyers standing on the corner, and they had... <laughs> <laughs> they did? <laughs> a conundrum. <laughs> you can't say that on television. Okay. <laughs> you can't say that on public television. <laughs>